Hello everyone, it is Christine here and I am back to do some work on my Roxy Journal of Stitchery. My Hussif or my Huswif or my Housewife, it's basically a needle roll that dates back quite a while um, and often were used by men to take away those in the army had them. Mum was telling me that she remembers that my grandpa has one, she doesn't know if, he's, if she still has it and that she also thinks dad probably had one as well when he was in the army reserves also. So I decided that given I am in um, Alpine Victoria at the moment and I have been going around um, lots of op shops and getting lots of lovely items, I'm going to make one entirely out of the items that I am sourcing here in the region. So I'll use my own threads that I've brought with me but everything else on them will be um, from op shop finds from up here. So this will be a Alpine Victoria Huswif or Housewife or Husif um, needle roll. So the base I'm planning to use is this lovely linen. Um, I've washed it in the washing machine and dried it in the dryer here. And it's got now this lovely sort of um, crinkly patina as well as quite a scattering of Travis um, fur. He's probably been um, rubbing his, his nose on it because it feels nice. And it's a really nice um, long um, length of runner. So I might not end up needing all of it. I thought I'll start with this bigger length and then I can either fold some over to make like an external pocket because one of the things I saw when researching some Australian versions of Huswifts, um, trying to say it like um, <laughs> Rachel and Sarah were say, saying in their video, um, is that they often had a lower um, open pocket. So it'd be like sewed along there and then there'd be a place that things could be put in like longer bits of thread. And I guess the benefit of that was that you could then um, pull those things out without having to undo the whole um, roll potentially. So I might end up incorporating that in. So that's going to be, yeah, the, um, the base for me. And I think the good thing is that it's going to allow me to be able to just stitch into one layer of it without going through to the back because it's actually a double layer um, linen. And it's just, yeah, it's such a lovely color. I love the stripes down the side. And I kind of think that I'll leave the outside relatively neutral. But I did have the thought that because I found at the op shops here this beautiful um, like calendar, it's like a tea towel, but it's actually a lace work piece. So I guess just a calendar display piece. And I thought, what fun, because it's got this little traveling um, sort of caravan scene with a little fire and all the nature. And I thought, well, these rolls, these needle rolls were made to travel with people. So wouldn't it be great to incorporate this um, on the front of it? So I've just clipped it on at the moment, just playing with um, my ideas for it. But what I was thinking is that the roll would roll up. Sorry, it's just starting the rolling process it's, is so long. Something, something like this, something like that. And then this little scene would be on the front. So that's my that's my thoughts. Um, if anything, I'd love to have the little, yeah the little rabbit head in scene, and I'm thinking that I can yeah stitch this over the linen, and then potentially I can even add some more um, color to it. But I quite like that it's quite subdued and quite quite simple simple looking because I don't want to go totally fancy on the outside, um, but I do want to keep this um, this little lace piece in its entirety. And if I did that, then it would mean that I would have um, the lace piece folded over and I thought I could turn this into some pockets, segmented pockets where I could put things like threads or bits of fabric. And then maybe um, down here I would have um, start to put things like my pin cushion, etc. So, um, but today I wanted to focus on making some boxes to go at the base of my um, needle roll. And I had the idea of using matchboxes. So I've made a prototype and learnt a few things along the way. And I thought we can make a small one and I'm um, part of a big one together. So what I've got is now a lovely little covered, fabric covered matchbox with the ends covered um, and the internal um, covered all with um, folded over edges. And then I've got um, the over the full case covered as well. On this one, I um, brought it over and folded the fabric along this edge. And I'm thinking I'll then do some little stitches to stitch that in place. Um, 
but I didn't want to put fabric over these edges because it would probably start to get stuck whereas at the moment it, it slides in really well so I haven't put fabric on the base and I haven't put fabric on the two edges I've just yeah done fabric covering on um, both ends on the internals and around the outside of the box and my idea is that these would be at the base of my Pusswiff. So let me just get the base back somewhere near the base, whether it would be um, right at the base or if I did have that little sort of fold pocket thing happening. Um, so these ones would then slide down. So I'd have two of those um, and then I'd have a larger one um, that would, and we've got to finish covering this one together, that would slide out this way. So I'd have two sliding down, one sliding out that way, and I'd have a little, I'm going to be planning to use a bit of um, pearl cotton to make a little pull for pulling that out. Or the other way it can come out is you just give it a push from the top. And these will be a great little place to keep things that you don't want falling out of other, other pockets. So small little bits and pieces, maybe buttons, etc. And I thought those could sit across um, this area here. So let's put our roll out of the way for the moment. And the fabric I'm using is the fabric, if you've watched my op shop haul video, um, is fabric that came from a cushion cover and it had two different colorways. Um, it had this lighter, lighter colorway fabric with beautiful flowers on it and then it had a blue section colorway as well and so you get a whole lot of lovely beautifully worn um, fabric out of cushions so or pillows cases so I'm often buying those at, at op shops and it's just a good way to get not a huge amount of fabric but enough to get plenty plenty done with it so that's the yeah, that's our finished prototype um, with the big one, I've started um, and done the top of it. In this case, I didn't fold this bit over because it's actually going to be sewn, sewn down. If I wanted to, I can probably just go along and put um, some little whip stitches there. And I've just used YooHoo glue um, to glue it in place. There's nothing stopping me also stitching into the cardboard and going around, but I don't think it's going to need it because the YooHoo glue's formed a, formed a pretty good um, bond on it. And when I stitch this onto the piece, um, I'll be stitching down through here anyway, through the fabric, and that will hold it in place as well. But I probably will just do a whip stitch along the, along the bottom. So let me show you the method um, for how I'm going to cover um, this one. What I've done is folded in the edges of fabric. First of all, I drew around just this middle section of the matchbox. Now you'll find matchboxes will be slightly different, but you can use pretty much this same, same method. So on the small one, we'll be doing it pretty much like that. Um, and on this one, um, we need something that will cover this middle rectangular almost square area so something that will cover like that just up to the edges with a folded in edge so I just um, in this case drew around that shape and then cut it out with a margin that I could then um, fold fold over um, I'll show you when I get to this one um, the same same method so we can get this bit um, stuck stuck down and we'll be sticking it down here because then once it's um, once I've done the other end, we'll be folding it over like like this. So let's get this bit stuck down. And yeah, with the um, with the matchboxes, this one just had a little bit of glue holding it in place. This was just a purely folded one, so there was no glue um, holding it in place. So it's really easy to to unfold. So what I'll do here is I'll put the glue on the cardboard because it's a bit easier to do it that way. Where you can. My favourite YooHoo glue for using for um, sticking fabric on things. But you could obviously use a fabric glue as well. It's just the YooHoo travels really well um, when you're on the road. It's easy to use in the stick form. So I'm just going to and don't worry if it's not perfectly square, you can kind of just stretch it and make it, make it fit. We're not going for total perfection, you just don't want it sticking up too much above um, your edges. So you'll just want to squish it down a bit if it's, if it's a tiny bit too high in any places. Just like that. Give it a good push down. 
and then we'll do this end. So what I've done at this end is I've just folded over to get a folded over edge and just use glue to, to tack that down. Um, and what I'm going to want to do is to put that folded down edge down here because this is where it's going to fold up and be the end um, and bring it over to here. So I don't need to worry about those little ones because they're going to go in the middle. It's a bit different to the other one, um, which I'll show you in a moment. So I'm going to stick that down there, which is my um, folded over edge down there. And then, in fact, I could just move it across a smidgeroo. Doesn't need to be quite, quite that far across. About there would be good, I think. And then I'm going to put some glue on here. Doesn't matter if I get a bit more on it because we're going to be putting it all together anyway. And so I'm going to fold that over so that I've got another um, folded in edge. Just fold this corner a bit more so that it just slants down a bit and then fold that bit over and fold this bit over and in and just tuck that tuck that under under your middle piece so that's good and now these pieces go in here so we will um, put some glue on there and on there, and on there, and on there. And then we're going to fold, fold those in here like this. And it's non intruder coming in. It's just Alex coming in. He's been for a little wander down the river, I think. Travis is totally wiped out after his lovely adventures in um, the top of mountain lakes. Had a lovely swim today. And so we'll just stick those there and then we'll put some more glue on here and we're going to fold this piece down and over and then we'll just try and get it nice and nice and tight and square just sort of fold it fold it in to make it a nice solid solid shape and then we're going to do the same oops same on this end and so I'm going to put glue there, plenty of glue. And again, we can do some stitching over it if we're worried that it's not going to, not going to hold, hold properly or anything. But the one I made yesterday, my prototype has held really well. So I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be all right. And I just thought, yeah, using matchboxes is a great idea because the sliding out means you can fully take out the tray if you do need it sort of fully out, but otherwise it kind of just sits in there. It's not heavy like a tin might be because I was looking in the op shops to see if there were some nice vintage tins. Um, but I thought, yeah, the matchbox is a great, great solution. And we all probably have some matchboxes um, lying around home. You can also often find lovely vintage ones, which you might not even need to cover in fabric, but I just thought, yeah, and no, I'd like this. I really liked this floral fabric, um, and I thought that will start to give me a bit of a color scheme for the internal of my, of my Huswif or Husif housewife needle roll. So there we go, and we can just check that it's fitting in okay. Let's see, it is a bit, um, because it's got the glue on it, it feels a bit slightly, slightly more flexible. And yep, it slides in and out. And what I will do is just put a bit more glue where it's just poking up there. Just make sure it's well, well glued. And as I say, if you really wanted to, you could just run a little stitch um, around the, the top of it with a, um, with a needle. If you had a decent, this one might be a bit too small to push through it, but oh, it goes through fine. So you could just do using just a regular sewing cotton, um, just do a line of stitches if you're worried that it was going to um, come apart. I might do that tonight if I'm just sitting here relaxing and not working on something. Um, and as I say, I might do um, some stitches over there as well. So I'll slip it in while it dries. It's not got anything that's going to stick on. 
Um, but yeah, I just think that is so, so sweet. I think these would be even great as little gift boxes as well. You'd probably do the finished edge like I did on this one with it folded, folded over if you were doing it as a gift box and probably do the little overcast stitches there. Um, so in fact, actually the other bit I can do, but I might show you on this one is putting the little um, pull, pulley tie on it. Now I'm wondering, do I use some of my own variegated thread or do I use some of my cottage garden variegated thread? I might use this one. It's a lovely, lovely colour and it's sort of, sort of the colours of that. Although this one is a bit thicker and it is a nice blue. It has the purple as well, which I probably won't use the purpley bit as much, but I can get some of the nice, nice blue. I've dyed them to sort of change colour quite quite frequently through it. Um, I've got a thicker needle which I might use here. And I'll just put the lid on my glue so we don't dry it out. So yeah, very happy with my finds and um, we stopped in at Mount Beauty on the way down from Falls Creek today and um, Alex wanted to get a coffee so we got that and then while we were waiting for his coffee we noticed there was a op shop, a uniting church op shop across the road. Um, so I went there and got a few, just got some yeah, pillow cases and then went down to another op shop which supports the local hospital and they had so many beautiful embroidered doilies so I had to save them, just had to. Um, and the lady at the counter was so funny, I had a huge pile of them and she's like, would $10 be okay for those? And I'm like, definitely. <laughs> um, so yeah, good to support the charities but just these regional um, op shops have the most beautiful um, yeah, handiwork, handiwork items, which are really lovely. Really, really lovely. So what I'll do for the handle, I think, and one option actually would be that you um, put this in before you fold this bit down, but in this case, I think I'll just do it. I'll just secrete the knot in by um, sliding my needle in behind here and seeing if I can bring it bring it out. I think I'll be able to do this. just want to bring it out a bit before that. Maybe about there will do. So that will put the knot inside here. And then I might go right through and just anchor that one. So I just moved a tiny bit further along. So I've gone in and out and then I might come over about the equal distance, so I guess about, about there. I'll put the hole in where I want it to be through and then I'll find that hole again from this side, which is sometimes an easier way to do it to get your positioning first. And then I'll come back over, actually I might do a second stitch here. Just a tiny bit along from where that one is. And then bring it back over to here, come out that same hole over here. And then back in to make our little our little pulley pulley loop. And we've unthreaded the needle, but that's okay. re-thread. So this is just a hand dyed um, using Derwent Inktense blocks, um, a crochet thread that I hand, hand dyed or hand painted. So that's about the size I want the little loop to be now. I'm just thinking how best am I to get my knot. What I might do is now go back out through this hole but from a slightly different different point. So I've cut just gone through from the back not where the um, where I came out but coming out through the, about the same hole. And then I might go back in slightly above it so we're just getting a nice little anchoring anchoring knot. And then I'll just see if I can pass my needle through and make another little little knot to anchor it at the back. Let's see how we go. 
There's that loop. Let's just, so I just want to get a little knot here. A knot at one end or other. Maybe down there. Yep. So that's now a securing knot. And now I'll try and pass it back to the front and pop it out from, from here somewhere. So I'm going to try and pop it out. Yep, about there. So bringing it out between the cardboard and the fabric. And I'll pull it through even a bit further than it is and then just cut it off so it sort of sinks back into that little, little hole there. And now we've got our little pull tie. So that will sit on the bottom of the roll that can be stitched down along there and along there onto the roll. Um, and then this can just pull out like that and it can be a great place to um, put small small things whether I mean I don't you have your needles in a little needle book but that's just an example of being able to keep some small items and easily easily get them out so that's that one um, this one I'll do yeah the same process of putting a loop in and then I'll show you from scratch how um, to do it on a um, smaller matchbox which as I say has a slightly different construction but pretty much the same I'm not going to in the de actual matchbox design of this one these ones come over and then this little bit flips up over them but I'm not going to use that little flippy bit in the fabric version I'm just going to let those lay flat so again we will want to measure ourselves a little section i'm just going to see if i use maybe something i've got from here i've got a folded have i glued that edge i think i did glue that edge so we could use that edge and have that nice little flower flower scene so what i will do so we basically just want this area here um, to be our area for it and we just then need a bit of um, overlapping of So what I will do is get my friction marker, which is erasable, but it's okay because we're going to be folding along this line anyway. Mark that down there. Mark that along here. And mark that. And so mum and dad have gone fishing, trying to catch some trout. They're just having a nice relaxing week moseying around here. Alex is always keen to visit his mountains, his favourite mountains, where he skis in, skis in winter. So I'm cutting around the area where I drew, just leaving a little margin where I can fold it over and glue it down so that I have, don't have raw edges um, in the matchbox. I mean, you could do it with raw edges, it's just it's more likely to fray, etc. And then I'll put the glue around. Get rid of that little, little thready bit. And then I'll fold it over where the lines are as approximately best as I can. And fold it over. I'll just put a bit on the corners to make sure it fully folds over. Get rid of that thready bit. Like that. Poor little birdie had, uh, we think he may have flown into the window while we weren't here and um, had conked out on the deck. So Alex has picked him up and um, I think that's why he was just outside. Alex is such an animal lover. Um, I mean, we both love animals, but he's an absolute animal lover. He won't even, yeah, kill a spider or anything like that. Um, so I think he's, yeah, was just checking to see if the birds come back to life. But I think, alas, um, it is not. Poor little birdie. Had a lovely little red, wasn't a robin red breast, but um, had a little red, red breast. So I was just trimming that off so I didn't have any pointy outy bits. And then that's going to sit um, across here. So we can, we can glue that down. 
And in fact, let's just go with the theory of gluing on the cardboard is much easier, Christine. So work smarter, not harder, as we say. So I'll just glue that down, save that little bit of glue for another time. I've probably made that a smidge longer than it needs to needs to be. Again, I'll just get that glue off the bottom because we don't really need that there. So I might even fold this edge just under a little bit more. It's possibly a little bit not far enough folded over. So I'll just pull that up a bit and then fold it over a bit further if I can. Just smooth it down, see how far it needs to needs to go. So that can fold about like that. I'll just make a mark and then I'll fold it over there-ish. That's better. So yeah, you don't want it, you don't want it sticking sticking up. Um, so yeah, if it is too if it is too far up, you'll just want to give it a a little a little bend. A little extra fold and I might just take a bit of bulk out of the corner out of the corner there taking a little diagonal cut off maybe even just a tiny bit more out of there knocking everything over. Everything's going flying, but it's all okay. So that's pretty good. We just want to make sure that these ones can still fold in well over there. Yep, that's going to work. Work fine. where I put some extra glue on the bottom by accident. Get that to just sit nicely there. And then we need to, um, we'll just work on these two and that bit as well. Because, hang on, let's just re-look at it. So because that bit also in this one um, comes down, we need this area covered with the fabric. So we'll need a non-raw edge at that end. So look if I've got any suitable bits of um, fabric over here to use. This one's, is that going to be big enough down that way? Nope, not big enough. So we'll just grab ourselves another bit of fabric. Again, you can kind of pick which bits you want to want to be using. I don't mind using some of the leaf, leaf one on the end. And so we essentially want something that's going to have a bit of margin around this, this end section. So if I take myself a section, a section about like, like that, should be about right. Slightly bodgy cutting. And then I'll fold over this end to start. So I can see where the frayed edge is, so hopefully I can get it semi semi straight, semi square. Like that. I'll just put my glue on here where I want it to be. Stick that folded edge down here. And then I can just fold these out of the way while we do the next step. Get this all glued down. I can then trim it, trim it off around it. Trim it off around there. I can take get my little corner pieces off, which will make it a bit easier, I think. And then let's just, oops, not that piece. So 
So we're just going to fold those raw edges over and in. And let's just make sure we don't have any little pointy bits pointing out from there. So just flashing, flashing those down. And then we'll get the other side done before we fold it all together. Getting rid of those bits of thread. So again, let's pick a bit where we want it. Oh, I've got this edge already folded over, so I might use might use a section from here, maybe even this this piece. So I'll just cut out a cut out a section of that. So that edge is already folded. I don't know how straight it is, but that's okay. Again, I should probably just put the glue on the card. Get these little bits out of the way. Trim around it. And you can absolutely make boxes from scratch yourself. It's just, yeah, the um, match boxes will give you a nice little form and a nice little sliding box, which I haven't seen that many designs, which are, um, yeah, sliding, sliding boxes. So good little way. I'll actually just put the glue all over because we'll be putting it all together anyway very shortly. Let's put that extra glue where we're going to be folding the fabric over on itself. Again, I'll just angle those down a little bit. Angle that up a bit at the bottom. Okay, and then we can start to put it together. So I'm going to fully glue this, the flaps. I'm going to glue those, glue those, glue those, those, and fully glue this area here. And then we're going to put our little flaps in like that. And then we're going to fold and push to get our little foldy end in place. And likewise on this end, we're going to do the same. So you just push it, push it in and make sure it's all, you could even use your little um, clippy if you've got some of these little <laughs> Um, quilt clips although sometimes they will press into the fabric and sort of leave a little mark but if you need help just while you're doing it you can whack one of those on I'm just going to put a tiny bit just to tuck that little edge that's poking out there just slightly under just put a little bit more glue there to get my where's my needle here just going to poke that little thready bit down that's poking up it should be part of the fold there we go much better and so yeah it looks really sweet in there i remember i think as as a kid i had a little doll's bed that was made out of a um made out of a matchbox and i think it used to sort of sit up like that so the yeah the, it would have a little pillow pillow up here um, and then, yeah, the, the doll would be actually in there like that was the, the blanket. But just, yeah, just absolutely love this idea. So I'll let the glue dry on that one, but we can put a little um, handle on this one, whichever end. Although I might actually go and find a, a nice pink. I think I might find a pink one. And you can see across here, um, I used um, part of the stitching that was actually on the pillowcase itself. But I love how it, yeah, matches in with the beautiful flower. Now you could obviously do thread painting on the flowers, on the fabric before you cover it. Um, but otherwise, yeah, you can just use a, a pretty fabric of whatever sort you want. Or if you do have some uh, vintage matchboxes, you could include them in as they are as well. So that is the inside done and we still need to do the outside. So we can quickly do that together. I say quickly, I've got all the time in the world being on, being on holidays, but you might not have all the time in the world right now. So I'll do it quickly for you. So again, I've got an end folded over here. I'll just get rid of this thready bit because we don't need that. And so what I'm going to do is make sure I've got enough 
distance to cover, yep, cover to the back. Um, and I'm just going to draw a line where I want my fold to be. And I'll do that all the way along so I can sort of get a straightish, straightish line. So pop a fold here too. So that's where I'm just going to then cut a line that goes just a bit beyond where that red line is. Um, and that will be where I put, fold my fabric over. Some glue along that along that line. Um, I probably should have actually before I did that just cut the corners, cut the corners like that, and then fold it over, fold it over like that where the line is. And then I'll just check that it looks about right. Sorry, I just bumped the camera with my knee. Yep, that'll work. And then I can go all over and put the glue on the, the matchbox packet. Put plenty of it on just to get a really good, good hold. Like that. And then lay the front down. Alex is going to check on our little birdie again to see if it's come back to life. It'd be amazing, It'd be a miracle if it comes back to life. And so we'll just smooth that around. Again, it doesn't matter if it's not totally, totally perfect. These are, these were rough and ready um, sewing rolls in many cases, traveling off with yeah, men to war or service of some sort or probably the yeah the the bushmen had them as well too if they needed to mend something so yeah i want to read up more on um australian versions of them so there we go and again i'll just tuck that little that slightly fray bit or it's just a thread that's sticking out and we'll just make sure this this bit's fully stuck down, but again, I'll probably go over tonight with just a little whip stitch along that edge, but that's all going to be sitting down into the piece anyway. And then, yeah, this will be the little completed, oops, and these pieces, what I do wanna do on the bottom, because these little bits stick out otherwise, is I'm just going to finish, oh, that one seems to have stuck down quite well, but I want both of them to be fully, fully stuck down. Give them a little push um, and then this should be should be good to go because it's still got the glue it's just made it a little bit um, sort of more malleable at the moment but once it all hardens up it will be it will be great and yeah perfect perfect little little cases really wonderful so there you go. So hopefully that's given you an idea. I'll be back to share my ideas for the pin cushion, for some little pouches, um, for thread holders, for a needle book. Um, just using all my lovely um, supplies from the op shop, including some of these um, just beautiful little bird um, and other embroidery fabrics. I think it must have been the one lady that actually did a couple of um, these. I'm just looking in my pile for where the other one where the other one has gone with the little the little roses so they had these tufty bits around both of them i've removed um, some of the tufty bits off this one because i'll be able to use that in my texture my fleur woods texture pieces and for this one i thought i'll be using it to make a, um, two little pockets i think but i'll come back and yeah share individual elements in other videos um, i just thought some people might want to be adding a box I know Rachel mentioned adding a box in her video um, and I thought yeah that's a fun idea for having somewhere to put those sort of looser items whether it's buttons or beads or small small things that you might want to keep in your your sewing kit and having a couple of different sizes I thought would be really really lovely so I'll finish putting um, these little hooky bits on them um, because that makes it much easier to to pull it pull it out 
and yeah, really, really sweet and a great use of um, reclaimed fabrics as well. So thanks everyone for watching and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.